Continuing Mustang Saga. Yeah. What's your phone? Oh, you found one. It's a live one. <laughs> no, it's a dead one. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what. He's got a Mustang parts book uh, from 2004. Yeah, everything points to 04, 05. Yep. 05 Mustang Monthly. What's that, Connor? Every paper that ever existed for this car? Apparently. Old sticker. Old sticker, yeah. Door they put lock, new stickers on. Rubber. Looks like a little parts list he made. You know, it probably has the uh, radio security code, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's Yeah, funny. for the alarm system. Yeah. National Parts Depot, 2005. Everything's pointing to this is a 17, I imagine it, probably 15 years hasn't been started. Well, what Which year would, is it now? That would explain the leaky carburetor. Hey, let's do our math like we always do. That's 2022. 20, yeah. 05. 17 05. Years. 17 years? Yeah, give or take. Man, I'm so good at math. And that would be about <laughs> what it takes to make a carburetor completely leaky like that one. <laughs> 10 years you get away with. Yeah. Over to that. 17? Mm, not and, so uh, much. Ooh. Hey, Pep Boys. Pep Boys. $257 in 05 money. Tire mounting and balancing. Well, that kind of gives you an idea when the tires were. 04. Tires are 18 years old. Yeah, they're kind of dated out. What a shame, man. There's, oh, there's, God. that looks to me like it ain't 50. I bet, I bet he came from there and parked it in the garage. <laughs> so this probably had pre-ethanol gas in it. 05, right? We ought to pull the tank, even with that. You want to pull the tank? Okay. Yeah, the tanks are always a problem, you know. I'll just take it, stick a siphon hose in it, and see what sucks out of it. Like I got away with it with my Monaco for about three months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I wasn't getting away with it. Anymore. Actually, probably for the price of this tank, be just buy a new one. But you're crawling under to get the fuel line off. I'll get the fuel line off. Yeah, about time. What are you complaining about? Well, these old Mustang fuel doors are really cool. Yes. Yeah. They use an old cable. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. And They're kind of a pain in the neck though. The cable's got to slide and roll. This cable, see what it does? It yeah. goes through that, and then there's a knot in the back side, and, and they're kind of, they could be tricky sometimes, because you got to turn it with the cable. Don't but kick the cable. I'm getting it. Okay. These are like just lag screws holding this tank. Grinch, grinch. This is the uh, infamous drop-in gas tank of Pinto lore. Yeah. From the people who demonized the Corvair. <laughs> the Pinto. Yeah. An explosive story. Explosive story about the Pinto. So this is the same fuel tank. It's the same thing. Mmm, filler neck. It's pretty sweet how they... There it is. Now we Look got that. all the emissions control. <laughs> Evaporative emission control. Yes. Oh yeah, we got gas in this sucker. A lot of it? Yep, she's full. There's there's 15 gallons. So we're getting vintage gas out of the deal. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so we got all the bolts out for the gas tank. Yep. You got the clamps off, you got all that. Uh, the last thing I gotta do is climb underneath it, but we'll wait till we siphon it up first. It's not really dropping the tank on a Mustang, it's lifting it. Okay. You want me to teach you how to siphon stuff? I know how to drink gas. <laughs> Yeah, so the first thing you always do is blow it out so you know you're not sucking gas right off the bat. Yeah, get some dirt out of it. You do know how to siphon, right? Yeah, you suck on the pipe till, till it goes over the breaking point. And then you spill gas everywhere. Okay. Roll around in it. <laughs> Lay that on its side. There you go. <laughs> oh, yes, Daddy. <laughs> you can stand up and do it, you know. You didn't know it. When you don't do it, then lift the hose up. <laughs> let the gas go back, otherwise that's your first sip. Ah, let me learn you how to do it. Go ahead. You know what I do? I don't put the loop in it. Oh, that's smart. There we got it. I'll give you that. <laughs> oh, I've siphoned gas before. I'm not seeing rust either. Well, it's coming up pretty clean, just very yellow. That good. gas is what, 17 years old? That gas will burn in the end. How much you want that? <laughs> uh, yes, we are that cheap. Yeah. Or the G, we could test it on the G. Okay. Because the G would really burn it. The G's just about out of gas, isn't it? All right, well, that's exciting, like watching paint dry, but we're going to siphon the gas out of this, and we're going to pull the tank out, clean out the tank, make sure it's not full of rust, and maybe just reinstall it, huh, Con? Ooh, time to switch buckets. Well, pouring gas on me, always doing it. Look at that, very controlled. We're very uh, EPA friendly. Yeah, there we go. We're all about the EPA. 
So you're gonna crawl in there and fix that, right? You're gonna unhook the hose so we can tip it up. Yes, sir. Finish Where's sucking it out. Okay, so we got the tank popped up and out, and we're yeah. tipping it and letting it suck into the bucket. But we're gonna take this tank back to the barn and clean it up, inspect it. You know, I got that bore scope. We can pop that in there. If it's a really nice, clean tank, we might as well use it. Well, this fuel is good, and you know, we've been. It's nice to have a clear siphon hose for multiple reasons. You can see rust. Yeah, you know? I'm not seeing anything come out of it. And right now, the way we got it tipped, we should be seeing rust if it's bad. So I think it's going to be a good tank. Yep. Then we could just put it back in and hook it back up. I think we're going we're to change all the that fuel stuff. Looks hoses. like new down here. Connor. We're going to change all the fuel hoses. That looks new. I think a lot of this stuff is. But new. we'll change the hose. Not I a big mean, deal. New, 20 years old. Well, but the feller who did this, he spent some money on it. It's even got the new rubber grommets around it and stuff. I know it sounds like I'm doing a sales job on this car. I'm just so impressed by it. It's so nice. Well, the thing is, just see this happen. Yeah. This is this is what you're looking for. Yeah, this is what you're looking for. If this you wanted a project for. car, it's done. They did it. Yeah, the guy did it 20 years ago, and then he barely drove it. So, oh. I mean, there are a lot of things you got to change, but... Not that much, man. Pretty good skeleton of a car. So we're going to make sure the brakes work, too, before we go taking it down the hill because <laughs> no. everything's a hill here that tank looks good inside if i were to guess but you probably can't see it on the video but i think that's gonna be a good tank this non-ethanol gas from 2005 is still good was it non-ethanol five i think so i don't think that they really started pumping it till obama i can't remember chuck grassley he got he foisted that up i that remember honest. being in high school <laughs> around 2005 and hot rod magazine was having articles about it about how bad it is well, I think people thought it'd be good for like E85 for horsepower, but it's just so corrosive for gas. Oh, you just want regular gas? Yeah, that doesn't eat up your injectors and fuel pumps and lines and hoses. And Whatever. Kill it ain't a perfect world, you know. Kill everything it touches? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Ruin your carburetors, like brand new ones. Ooh, there she is. Okay. Oh, we got the tank out. We got the tank home, cleaned it up some. Didn't need a whole lot of cleaning. There wasn't much junk in it. Now Connor's jacking up that front, and we're going to slide this out to the middle of the bay so we don't have to work around the edges of the wall, right? Push down on that corner, okay? Really? Push down on that corner. Okay, I'm pushing. How about I go pick up in the other corner? What do you call those things? Car movers. Car movers? Car trolleys. Car, what? You know what they are. Probably the first thing I had to do is take the carb off and rebuilderize it. Yep. Uh, you want help? Yeah. <laughs> right, it's moving now. Get to see this side of the car. So this is what happens. A tire shop put these on tight, man. Oh, wait, are they lefty tighty, righty loosey? They're not, are no, they? No, that's only a low part thing. And this would be the good side, anyways. The normal side. Oh wait. Whew. Mopars have got the reverse threads on the driver's side. Something else had them too, though, Con. Oh, Studebaker. Yeah. Guess how I know? Snapped off two studs before I figured that one out. After 1970, they thought, this is stupid. Everybody else is driving around without their wheels falling off. <laughs> I don't mean to brag. <laughs> eh, you're pretty brutal. Axle strapping power. Yeah, yeah. A little harder, Con. Yeah, boy. It's all about the right stance. See, when you get old and feeble like I'm getting, it's good to have a young... <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is how you get old and feeble. <laughs> When you're Let's in your 30s, gun. do this kind of stuff. Let's see if the gun will do that one. Oh, the front ones are coming right off. Does that wheel want to turn at all? Or is that stuck? I had it turn in the wheel. Oh, yeah. But it is Well, they are drum, drum brakes. <laughs> They're drum brakes. They got so. surface rust, I'm sure. Of course, you know what they say. Drum brakes have actually have less drag. They do. They're better for drag cars. When they're set and up. And really, right? they stop really well the first time. It's heat dissipation. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. 
Quite Sometimes I'm driving the Mustang with the drum brakes and they'll chatter like mad. And other times it's just smooth as silk. Because it's heat, you know? Well, I try not to use the brakes. Me too. Bad for them. Yeah, it's really bad for you. Your brakes wears them out. <laughs> so we're on a private lake road, so we're gonna go to the end of that. We'll be completely DOT legal. Yeah. And uh, it'll we, could, we might be able to get through the gear. But if we weren't on a private lake road, we would just take it out on a regular road. If right we weren't on a private lake road, we'd be in Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. I don't know how that works out. Ooh, that's look at that old, nice little badge. That's the street racer slang. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. We're going to Mexico. Kids in your slang. Oh, what are you taking pictures? I want to see how rusty we are in the most rusty spot in all these cars. Well, what you find out? Eh, it's full of road debris, so that's really not good, actually. Yeah, let's clean that out. Yep. Oh, I see it. So, if you want to know where cars rust, right up in there. That's where it catches it. It's just laying in there. There's also holes, usually, that go into the frame rails. But this looks good, doesn't it? It does. That's it does. a frame it, patch it down there, isn't it? I don't think it's a patch. Oh, is that? That's oh, a factory. that's a stiffening kit. That's a factory section. For the V8. No, I, well, maybe. maybe. I'll bet it you is it a is. Factory stiffer. Remember, they changed something about these uh, the torque box. Well, that's the torque a, box that's a Mopar updated. thing, too. Yeah. Now, I remember reading about it in Mustangs because that's wide open there. They, they changed that to close it up and tighten up the whole. I know torque. that on a V8, a big block car, in like the 67, 68, they've got an actual strut tower reinforcement. Yeah. On, ba on the back side. Yeah. So that's the difference you'd find there between a small block and a, and a big block. They needed it. So. All right, well, I'm going to pull that back wheel off. All right, so I'm going to try to pull this drum off of here. Ooh, I could use this little teeny hammer. A little bit of dry rust in there, Connie. We got some brake dust, so I evidently did drive it. Some. I think you had the brakes adjusted up too high. Plenty of meat there. There should be. The rivets are a mile away, huh? Yeah, let's get all that stuff out of there, huh? Yeah. Anything flat and musty. Yeah, because we're going to give it a quick detail. In other words, a vacuuming. Uh, and there it is, the 8-track player. Classic. So cool. The window cranks work nice. They must have greased them up. You going to pull the carb apart? Yes, I am. Or you want me to do it? Looks like you're doing it. Okay, good. We ought to try stepping on the brakes. We can hear if they're working. So I'm going to put that back drum put back drum on. Back have you step on the brakes and see if you think they're working. All right, so the drum goes back on. It didn't come off that hard. I should be able to put it on, but it is, it is a little, there we go. Nice, perfect. Huh. Ah, so far that looks pretty good to me, Con. You wanna step on the brake? I'll do it again. Okay, so Con just stepped on the brakes and I went right to the floor. <laughs> Let's put fluid in it. Yeah, I bet it dripped out over 15 years or whatever. Yeah, you know what though? That's a bad sign. Okay, yeah. so I just put in some brake fluid, which is probably a mistake. Because we're going to find a leak somewhere. It had to leak out. Uh, so we'll give it a quick try. If it don't work, we're just going to go go all in with new uh, wheel cylinders and a new master cylinder. And uh, this is pretty neat. We got the, uh, the choke. Uh, there's a heat tube that comes right off the exhaust manifold. Oh, I didn't know it came from way down there. Oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah, you see that? I see it's way down on the last thing there. Yeah, yep. normally on these old cars, you'll find something cast into the intake manifold. Yep. That's, I'm assuming that's factor for 65. Yeah, work, they work good. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna pull that apart. I'm gonna get in and stomp on the brakes a couple times, see what happens. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of brakes. So I pull the cap off. It's got a screw top. Look at that. Single pot. Single pot. That means all your brakes. Oh, uh, you know the first uh, major car co company to come out with two circuit brakes, Connor? AMC. Oh, what year? Uh, 65. Oh, I think it was 64. I think it was around this era, and we'll nobody else it. was doing it. Nobody else did it. And then uh, well, by 68, they were... they were. Everyone had it, yeah. They, they made sense. These are like... It actually makes sense to have your parking brake work on these ones. Yeah, because that's all the other you've got. I'm not a big fan of parking brakes in general. But. Well, they were called emergency brakes. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Little Holly 2 barrel. Isn't that something? Did they put a spacer on that? I think it's factory. You think that's factory? Yes, I do. Oldest looking vacuum cap. Yeah, let's make sure that don't leak. Yep. That vacuum cap looks dubious. It looks like it needs to be replaced with something else. Anyway, back to this. So I'm going to put a little more fluid in there, and then I'm going to pump the brakes some more. Yeah. Look at this thing. Why don't they make cars like this anymore? I just, I love the steering wheel. Just the steering wheel is freaking awesome. The counter says they're too hard. That's why the new ones are all mushy. 
hand cranks, nice big handle. That still works good. These these weren't 100%. I mean, they did go bad on you when the cheesy little gears wore out. But what an awesome instrument panel. We've got our we've got our fuel gauge here and then our speedometer. And I bet the needle bounces cuz it just runs off a cable. Temperature gauge right over here and got our AM radio. AM stands for anti music. Light switch, heater controls which work in this car. Awesome ignition switch. No safety key with the code. Over here we have our light switch. Wait a minute. Oh, that's lighter. That's the cigarette lighter on this side. Anyway, I'm gonna pump the brakes a little more. Let's see if we can get some brakes up. Well, don't go to the floor anymore, Con. I think we got brakes. They're coming back. They're coming back. Back from the dead. Can you spin a wheel? <laughs> the brakes are back from the dead. They hold too. They're not sinking on me. That's cool. See if you can see if I'm stopping a wheel. Kind of got to put all his torque into it. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, stop that wheel. Yeah. Cool. So the brakes will work, I think. Oh, yeah, you did it again? Yep. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. So we got one brake. No, we, we got them all. This guy. Well, you can't. As long oh, as we're not I'll put dripping. it neutral. As long as they're not dripping. You know? Well, they're not sinking either. Can you turn it? You know, I can't turn them. You what should you? be able to. I know, but I bet you, like you said, the adjusters on the brakes. Huh? Well, I brought, I bought brake clean. You could take things apart, make sure all the adjusters will let the drum spin, see if there is a leak, maybe it's something you could just tighten up. Yeah, or we could just drive it. Just check it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it looks like I'm pulling these wheels off. Pull the wheels off. I think this is old acrylic enamel paint. It's got a chip. It's always a little bit on the chippy side. Oh, Connor wants me to pull all the wheels off. Yeah, I'll pull. I'll, I'll I'll pull one of those fronts off and see what the wheel bearing grease looks like. I'd like to see everything. Oh my gosh, it's like a tyrant. All right, I'll pull the wheel. So I got the other impact tool. My back, my back. The two hundred and thirty pound red shirted hey, one. Hey man, I'm two twenty. Whatever. Okay. Are you really? Oh, well, you're slimmed right down. Yeah, I got COVID. COVID nineteen <laughs> lost twelve pounds. The coronavirus. Put all that weight on with Corona. Yeah. Well, Corona giveth and Corona taketh away. <laughs> you know, that's a... I can get the rest of the way. That's a biblical reference. I know. I believe it's the book of Job. Book of Job. Mm -hmm. That's what Job said about God, and then he was still happy about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, my buddy Kenny on Facebook ain't happy about it. <laughs> he said <laughs> a lot of different ways of looking at it. I lost my dog. I look at it this way. God gave me everything I got right now, and I'm pretty happy with it, exactly. so I'm thankful. Some people aren't. Let's see if my little hammer trick works on this side. Oh, this one's a little tighter. Huh? This one seems lustier. I'm afraid I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to loosen up the adjuster. Yeah, you gonna reach into that little window in the back? I hate to, but yeah, I don't have an adjuster tool. The old little window reachy tool? Uh, well, if the jack stand ain't in the way. I found our leaky one too, by the way. I strategically placed everything. So this is this is the wheel that's been leaking. And that means this may not be posy, because if it's in park and one wheel won't spin, the other right. wheel won't spin either. But if it was a neutral, if I can spin that other wheel, we know it's not a posse. I would put money in it and not be a posse. Yeah, me too. Let's try it. Pull it out of park. So if this wheel spins, the other wheel's the other wheel's stuck. We know that. If this wheel spins, it's not posse. Aw, Connor. What? One wheel peel. He's a one wheel peel. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We can weld the spiders up for him. You get burnouts at half the cost of the one wheel peel. That's true. Right? Yeah, well, yeah. You know what you do? Put air shocks on and balance it out. Some sweet air shock. Okay, back in park. So this wheel is stiff as heck. I gotta get this drum off. It's gonna require some beating and possibly some adjustments. We'll see what happens. I might need a real hammer. There we go. Oh. 
I'm moving it back and forth. Take that, tough guy. My arm's ready to fall off, but I got it. Well, I found the leaky wheel cylinder, Connor. Yeah, it's brake fluid. So the brake adjuster's all seized up. We're gonna see if we can get some heat on there and get it to cut loose. My adjuster, I'd love to find your adjusters. <laughs> That's funny. You're probably behind your ears, right? My adjusters. Uh, Are you saying I'm out of adjustment? <laughs> Yeah. I did not set my little fire light. Pointing heat down at the concrete floor, and you can cause popping on the concrete if you're not careful. Especially when it's just moist and wet and stuff. Yeah. Make the water boil. We don't want the water boiling. Boy, a little heat really does does do the trick. Got it, Connor. I'm gonna take this thing all the way apart, and then I'll put it together and adjust it up. Cause it wouldn't move, but not will. Hey guys, thanks for watching that Mustang video. We worked on it for a whole day. I cut it into a couple parts, so look out for part two. Thanks, like, share, subscribe. Thanks again, we'll see you on the next one.